I've been getting a lot of questions about electrolysis and even though it's been around for so long, way before laser, there are still a lot of people who haven't heard of it or if you have heard of it you still have a lot of questions that you want to know. I'm hopefully going to cover them in this video. I am a beauty therapist, I trained in electrolysis four or five years ago so you can trust the information that I'm going to give you. Now I only really got to practice electrolysis within the last year and that's just because the previous salons I worked at didn't provide it as a treatment. Even though one year isn't a lot, it's definitely enough for me to give you the information that you need. Also I think it's important to let you know that I get electrolysis done myself and I have been for the past few years so I know exactly how it feels. I've got a hair removal journey playlist that I made, I'll link that at the end of this video as well as down below. The first question I get asked is what on earth is electrolysis and the most simple way that I put it is it's permanent hair removal done with a very fine needle. Now I call it a needle because it's just easier to describe but the correct terminology to use is it's a very fine probe. It's so fine that it's got the thickness of a hair strand. Imagine this is the hair, the need, the probe sorry, is inserted into the hair, an electric current is used to cauterize the hair where um, it cuts it off its blood supply and then the hair is kind of loosened tweezers are used to slide the hair out you shouldn't feel the hair pluck if you are getting electrolysis done and you feel the hair pluck your treatment isn't being done properly there are also different types of electrolysis but i'm going to get into that later on Another very popular question that I get is why should I choose electrolysis? How is it different from laser? Electrolysis is FDA approved as the only method of permanent hair removal rather than hair reduction which is what laser does. Laser hair removal is better for bigger areas such as your legs. Electrolysis is better for smaller areas and facial hair. Electrolysis treats one hair at a time so it's it takes longer. Laser covers a bigger area at once and that's why it's better for bigger areas. Laser hair removal doesn't work for everybody when it comes to facial hair but electrolysis does um, and if you watch my journey you'll, you'll see why. <clears throat> I quickly had to pause the video and explain this because there's another major difference between the two. Electrolysis can be done on any skin colour and hair colour, whereas laser can't. Um, so for example, when it comes to white hair, laser can't treat that, it doesn't work. Um, but electrolysis can, so I just thought it would be important for you to know that as well. But yeah, let's get back to the video. Unfortunately, we cannot tell you when you're going to get your results because everybody's body is different. Even though something like laser is sold as a course of six or 12, there is no guarantee that you're gonna get your end result by the end of that course. You might need another course. From my personal experience, I saw a difference after about three months and I've seen customers experience a similar sort of thing um, and that's if they had it done every two weeks. In terms of when you get your end result, I cannot give you a number. It can take a year, it can take two years, sometimes longer for some people. It depends on your hormone levels. It depends on if you've ever touched the hair before. So if, you've, if I've got hair that I've never waxed before, it works a lot better. But if you've got electrolysis done on an area where you've waxed it before and you've done all sorts of things to it before, and you've stimulated it, it's a little bit harder to get rid of that hair. I found that in my experience anyway. If you have a hormone imbalance, like myself, I've got polycystic ovary syndrome, when your hormones change, you might grow hair from different hair follicles. So you might need top-up sessions your whole life. That top-up session could be once a year or a few times a year. Everybody's body is different so it's it's a really tricky topic in terms of getting your results you need to be very very patient but I promise you that the results are going to be worth it you can get electrolysis done anywhere like anywhere on your body as long as the hair is visible under the magnifying lamp um, so that we can use that probe to insert it into the hair. If the hair is so fine that I cannot even see it under the magnifying lamp, well then it's not even worth removing. Um, I can't even do the treatment because I can't see where I'm supposed to put the probe. 
some salons, they don't do it on the body anymore and they only do it on facial hair. After um, laser hair removal came out, they just, they don't bother doing it on the body. They just recommend laser. But yeah, every beauty salon is different. I know I've already answered this question, but I'm gonna go into more detail now. Everybody's body is different. I'm gonna repeat this a lot. I know it's very frustrating, but I cannot give you a number of when you're gonna see a change. The human body is quite complex. Everyone's diet is different. Everyone's from different backgrounds. Some people have a hormone imbalance, some people don't. Just to make people happy and just to give a guideline, I say that you will see a difference around three months after having electrolysis. And that's if you've had it done like once every two, uh, one to two weeks. Is it painful? I'm gonna say yes, because there is a form of discomfort. It definitely depends on your pain threshold. Me personally, I find it uncomfortable, but it is very bearable. I just close my eyes and that's it, I don't even move. It's not that bad. There are definitely a lot of people who find it very painful. Some areas are more sensitive than others, so I personally get it done on the chin and neck area. The neck is sore. Okay, it hurts. But what I find helps is when that person starts from one side and then works their way round the area, that area almost gets numb and it hurts less. Let me know if you feel the same. Maybe it's just personal. You shouldn't feel pain with the probe inserting into the hair follicle. It's the current that is uncomfortable because it's hot. People know a lot about laser and they know that with a lot of lasers you need to shave before you go to your session. Electrolysis is the opposite, you need to grow the hair out. As long as the hair is long enough to slide out with tweezers, then you can go and get your appointment done. Just whenever the hair grows, that's when you should get your session done. Eventually, when you start getting your results, you won't need to go in that often at all. You might need to go once a month, and then once every two months, once every three months, you'll notice that as the hair is reducing, you're going into the salon less. Electrolysis has been recognised as being safe for over a hundred years, so you have nothing to worry about, as long as it's being done properly. Will it cause scarring? Okay, this is a big question. I need to, I need to sit properly for this. Right. Electrolysis shouldn't cause scarring. It all depends on the person doing your treatment. Now, some things that will help, for example, I personally found that gold needles work a lot better. I find it easier to work with. I feel like it just inserts into the hair follicle a lot smoother, and that sort of helps in terms of making it less likely to scar someone. Another thing that takes part in scarring is the needle size. There are fine needles and thicker needles, depending on the thickness of the hair. If the beauty therapist uses a thicker needle on a finer hair, that can cause scarring because when that thick needle is inserted into the hair follicle, it's obviously too big, so it's gonna stretch it out and it's, it could scar your skin. If the needle is inserted in a wrong angle, that can cause scarring as well. Normally the needle is inserted within the direction of the hair. So let's just say the hair is growing like that. The needle is inserted following the direction of the hair. If I insert the, the needle in this direction, that can cause scarring. If you get electrolysis done and you scab after your treatment, if you pick those scabs off, then you can scar. My answer is no. And that's just assuming that the person you're getting it done by is doing it correctly. If electrolysis is done correctly, there are no side effects. There are, there's nothing to worry about. I've also had a lot of people ask me if you get pigmentation. Now, no, if electrolysis is done correctly, you shouldn't get pigmentation from it. I personally have seen on myself and on a few customers where there are like little white dots on where the treatment was done. You can barely see it, you need to come like really close. From my personal experience, if anybody has experienced any scarring or pigmentation from electrolysis, it's so incredibly minimal that you can barely notice it. If you just go to a beauty therapist and ask for a skincare routine, 
they will recommend you a skincare routine that has certain vitamins in the products that will heal any pigmentation and scarring that you have. This is just my personal advice for you and what I personally have seen. Right, so there are a few different types of electrolysis. There's galvanic, there's thermolysis and blend. Galvanic uses um, there's a chemical reaction that cuts the hair from its blood supply. Thermolysis uses heat and then blend is a mixture of those first two methods. So it's a it, they use a chemical reaction as well as an electrical current. I've had three different beauty therapists over the years and they all use thermolysis. I've seen good results. My textbook from when I trained, it says that the blend method is the most effective. Everyone's debating on what method is the best. If you want my view on it, I honestly, uh, they all work fine, okay? Electrolysis in general is known as effective so I'm not going to get too much into detail about it because if you're not a beauty therapist you're probably like what are you talking about? Now there's another type of electrolysis done with tweezers so it's a tweezer where they grab hold of the hair it sends an electrical cu electrical current and it does it that way but I found that there is no significant evidence showing that this method is effective so I would stay clear of the tweezer one. What will I need to do before the treatment? So you need to make sure that the hair is long enough for us to be able to tweeze out. I would recommend that you avoid all types of hair removal where you're removing the hair from the root four weeks before you start your first session of electrolysis just so you're getting the most out of that first session. Do not shave the area before the treatment. Remember that the hair needs to be long enough so that we can slide out with trees as you actually need to grow the hair out. You will see some redness, you might see some swelling, but this will disappear after 24 to 48 hours, depending on how sensitive your skin is as well. Scabbing might occur. Now, I had this whole dilemma with scabbing. I experienced scabbing from the first two beauty therapists I went to, the one that I'm going to now, where I work. I don't experience scabbing because I use a different technique. Just be aware that you might experience scabbing. If it does, don't pick the area. The scabbing might last from a few days to two weeks and that just depends on how fast your skin heals. What aftercare advice will I need to follow? Okay, don't apply makeup for 24 hours. Just don't do anything to the area for 24 hours. Like even when you're having a shower, try to avoid the area because you don't want any products to go inside it. You might end up getting bacteria into those open hair follicles. I would recommend that you put something like aloe vera gel or antiseptic cream on the area. It will just help the area heal a bit faster. If you have experienced any scabbing, don't pick the area. Just let the scabs heal itself and let it fall off naturally. I also wouldn't recommend that you exfoliate just for five days. Just because your skin might still be sore, so let it heal a little bit for five days before you use any exfoliating products. In between your sessions, don't do anything. Don't wax don't thread, don't tweeze, do not use any other form of hair removal because if you remove that hair from the root, you're just doing the opposite of what electrolysis is trying to do. Electrolysis is trying to destroy that hair and you're going and tweezing and waxing it and you're stimulating that hair. Just stick to electrolysis alone. I understand if you don't always have the time to get electrolysis done, but if you're someone who does a bit of waxing and threading, um, and then you do a bit of electrolysis and then you don't have enough time so you thread it or you tweeze it. Honestly, there is no point and you're not doing yourself any favours. If you are that desperate, then I recommend that you just trim the hair with scissors. It is a big commitment, but I promise you, if you are getting it done by the right person who knows what they're doing, it will be worth it. I'm hoping that I've answered all of your questions. If you have any more questions, comment them down below and I can always do a part two. But that's it from me today. Bye.